Hi, I'm Ken Ankley. I'm an investor and an advocate for the development of the Benton Harbor Arts District. I started in 1972 working at Bramall Supply, which has been in the neighborhood since uh, 1873. So I've only been here since 72, but the business has been here uh, for 140 some years. Like most industrial supply companies, our business was located in a part of town that was very close to industry. When I first started, it was a dilapidated, deteriorating neighborhood. So then in the uh, 1990s, after a period of decline, um, you know, the neighborhood consisted of a lot of empty buildings, uh, buildings that slowly fell into disrepair to the point where they could not be renovated and a lot of the buildings disappeared. In the early mid 1990s, um, there was an effort that was begun by the Cornerstone Alliance in conjunction with um, other local influential business people. They saw the, um, the state of downtown and recognized that there was some serious work to be done and a program that was known as Community Renewal Through the Arts uh, was begun. Hi, I'm Lynn Clayton. I'm the executive director of Water Street Glassworks, and I'm from Benton Harbor, Michigan, born and raised. Well, Water Street Glassworks opened in 2004, and my son took his first class in 2007. I was a teacher and started um, volunteering and eventually became executive director. I was drawn to this place because it wasn't just a place for art, but it was also a place for community and for education. And I think really that's what I think is so unique about the Arts District. I think that, you know, Water Street Glassworks, Jerry and Kathy Catania, who were the founders, started this, I mean, 20 years before they opened in 2004. They saw the potential down here to really be a change agent, to like community renewal through the arts really works. So they took this old building and fixed it up and started Fired Up and started classes. And here we are. I mean, it's 16 years. This is our 16 year anniversary this year. Um, and I just, I am so excited to see not just what has happened in the past, but what's happening now. Well, after being a teacher in the Benton Harbor Schools for 26 years, I started a music program and arts program at the Salvation Army on the other side of Main Street here. And we literally outgrew that space and I was looking for a place to take the music program and, uh, you know, locate it into a space that was designed for music instruction. The Salvation Army really wasn't. And we were busting at the seams and I was creating studios out of closets and places on the third floor, et cetera, et cetera. And I wanted to get on this side of Main Street, you know, to be where it was all happening and it was artsy. So I ran into Ken Ankley at an art hop on June 27th of, um, it would have been 2007. And that's when all of the rebirth was starting down here. And he was starting to develop, you know, this space for lofts and um, he wanted something to come into this uh, garden level where we're sitting right now, or street level, I would say. He didn't want retail, didn't want another restaurant, at least at that time, and he wanted something artsy. And he was about ready to give up. So anyways, introductions transpired, and I got a call from Ken. He said, could you come over on your lunch hour? Todd and I would like to talk to you. I came over and he said, we would like to develop the space we're sitting in here right now. And that's how it began. I was gone for a while and I returned to Benton Harbor um, a few years ago uh, and I was using the previous Phoenix coffee shop as a uh, like a remote working office um, and so when it was going out of business I felt like it was important to our community and so I, I picked up the mantle. Uh, I thought it was important that this space remain alive in our community and so it wasn't 
it wasn't so much that I was looking to own a coffee shop, um, and it wasn't so much that I was passionate about coffee per se, it was more that I was passionate about our community and keeping that space alive, and coffee seemed like the way to go. The arts district was, was pretty run down when things started popping up here, and so I think you see when people are, are more authentic about their motives, you know, when they're really doing what they're passionate about, um, it, it's, it's more real, it's more authentic. You have like genuine relationships with people. I think the Arts District is special because most of the people living here and working here, you know, were involved in creating the Arts District and most of them are like very active in the community. They're, they're here every day. It, it's not like a silent ownership sort of thing. Um, the people who have businesses here are here working on the ground um, and I think that's, that's more genuine than you get in a lot of communities. Uh, we got our start in the Arts District actually because of Abel. Um, when we started talking about wanting to own a restaurant, he really wanted to open in Benton Harbor. Um, at the time, I was from Mishawaka and I didn't really know that much about Benton Harbor and he was very persistent on it. So we came down here and we started looking around and we happened to see a sign in this building that said for lease and that was it. We, we fell in love with it. It's such an organic process that happened. You know, when I came into Benton Harbor and thought, there is no way we are gonna open an organic restaurant in the middle of Benton Harbor. I think Bell's lost his mind to, this is the most beautiful community I can imagine being part of. Our original concept was just to have this tiny little dining room with 10 tables in it and the kitchen and it started out as 750 square feet with the adjoining artist studios already. It was such a wonderful addition and it's what made us really fall in love with this space originally. The love that exists down here and the camaraderie and the joining of so many different cultures and perspectives and people in such a small little space, it is absolutely beautiful. Hello, my name is Tom Ives and I'm owner of Three Pillars Music. One of the first records I bought was the Rolling Stones' Not Fade Away in 1965, and I played the heck out of that. And of course, right around the corner here, they showed the Beatles movie Hard Day's Night, with the Beatles being chased all around, and we thought that was really cool, so that really got us into the Beatles and then just into rock music from there on. I got my start in the Arts District by buying a store that was nearby called Ferris Music. I basically bought all his products, but wanted to add records and stereo gear to the whole thing. Our spot was a art gallery only used about four times a year for art hops. And so um, I thought this would be a good location, a little more on the main drag of the Art District. We like to keep an inventory of beginner, mid-level guitars and ukuleles. You can buy albums, you can buy strings, you can buy a few different things without having to go to three or four different stores. Three Pillars Music to me is kind of a cultural warehouse where we're getting new buyers all the time. Um, words passed around the streets and other parts of the county that there is a record store here. By having a lot of new buyers coming into our store, it also is opening them up to other parts of the arts district, the restaurants, the brew pubs, and the art galleries. So the livery will be celebrating 15 years here in August, which is quite an accomplishment and um, certainly the livery feels like uh, one of the cornerstones of the of the arts district. Um, and I feel very, very fortunate to continue to be a part of it and uh, to continue to support, support this area and provide the service that we do for this area. I, it's really, really important, I think, to let people know that, you know, we are open to everyone and, you know, and we, we really do believe that all people should be loved and have someone to love. Um, and that's a, that's a really critical thing. And I think if, if we can inspire young people and say, hey, you know what, you can run a business in this way. You can have a community that is that embraces difference and that embraces um, diversity um, and that celebrates its environment and you know all of these things. I think that's really really important, and we are really going to try to start taking some steps um, to make. Um, more economic security for our employees um, and uh, really just, you know, like I said, try to show the way. 
um, and try to try to make sure that people know that, you know, we're we're ready to kind of move forward into a different phase of 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 how how things should work and how things will work. So I've been fortunate to see the youth of Benton Harbor be more and more engaged. Uh, and we want to make certain that the, the folks that live here in Benton Harbor see themselves represented on stages in their region as well. So for the longest time, it was hard to get students from Benton Harbor High School or the middle schools to be engaged in children's music workshop, but I've seen that grow. And uh, we've been very, very fortunate to see some of our finest young students come out of Benton Harbor High School, come out of Lake Michigan College. And uh, some of my most engaging youth right now are Benton Harbor kids, um, namely Martel Burton and uh, Landon Horn, and they're just fantastic and their families are engaged. And uh, so I, I hope to continue to see more of that representation, both on our stages, backstage, and in our audiences, because um, this is where we call home and uh, we're not leaving Benton Harbor anytime soon. We love it here and we wanna make sure that uh, all ages, shapes, sizes, and colors are represented right here at the Ghost Light. I'm Tammy Philippi. I'm president of Thayer Incorporated. Uh, we're super proud to be part of this project and part of this fantastic neighborhood. Thayer has been here since 1946. Uh, we've been downtown Benton Harbor since 1973. Um, my parents bought Thayer in the early 70s and moved into the building that is now Wolf Marine. And then we moved into this building in 1981. So we've been down here right in the middle of the arts district since before it was an arts district. It's always been a beautiful little corner of the world to be part of. And we've been super fortunate to watch many of the wonderful changes take place in the neighborhood. You know, I always worked at Thayer on the side, always, forever. I've always had two jobs. So when it was time for my mom to think about retiring, just the timing was right. The timing was right for me to say, I can step in and I can do that. And and it's been a great fit. I, I am passionate about this work and our neighborhood. I hope we continue to create this community that people want to be part of. And the more vibrant this neighborhood is, the more people want to be part of it, the more they want to live here, work here, eat here, play here, do art here. And that makes this a vibrant community that creates growth. At the very least, it helps us appreciate one another. We as Thayer have been really uh, involved. So for example, we adopted the park across the street many, many years ago because, you know, the, the city was not in a position to take good care of that park. And we wanted our neighborhood to feel inviting, much like the people from Arts Cafe took on the Arts Park. They wanted it to feel inviting. I mean, uh, this is a neighborhood of people who want to invite people. And we do so by, you know, opening our doors for art hops, for, you know, making a park where none existed before and you know inviting our own customers our own people to come in and sit down take a look around hi i'm anna russo Suber from ars gallery arts and culture center uh, we are the home to the i am the greatest those are the orange steel silhouettes around benton harbor and saint joe and they are inspired by Muhammad Ali, and we use them as a role model and muse. We educate at-risk youth through, through public art and arts education. We consider ourselves the community arts center, um, being that we offer language, um, art classes, uh, culture classes, uh, lifestyle classes even. How we fit in the arts district, um, we're just part of the fabric. We're honored and thrilled to be here and to be a part of this fabric. We are such a... Um, friendship community we support each other we want everyone to succeed and and give their best and and um, we'll do anything to support that this is our 11th season we're going into we've been down here um, over a decade now i came here because it grew and i needed a space of my own um, and so i started basically here on the foundation of a summer arts camp uh, and i immediately collaborated uh, i called jerry and kathy catania 
who were the founding members of the Water Street Glassworks. So probably the first seven, six or seven years we worked together. Um, I ran the camp and then one leg of it was down at Water Street. Rolling into our 2020 season, we are um, kicking it off with ARS Art in a Box. So Art in a Box, basically we pick a theme. The theme this year is Italy and it is filled with five lessons, three large lessons and two smaller lessons. Um, it comes with a USB stick um, that has all the um, video recordings of the teachers. So it's almost like you're in the class. Um, and um, also a folder with all the lesson plans in place. We do masks that are during a period of Carnivale in Venice. Um, we're also doing a segment on Caravaggio a really famous painter back in 1500s. Um, and we're also doing a segment on Renaissance, which I think is a really interesting word, being that the Benton Harbor Arts District has been rebirthing for the last decade and a half or so. Our new exhibit kicking off in June 2020 here is The Magical World of Dave Smeichel. And he takes a spin on people that he might know. Some of these are Hollywood stars. So I love this exhibit. This, this exhibit will actually be up through the end of July. And we are actually putting all these on our website for sale. There's some emotional attachment to the Arts District for me being a resident. Um, and I think it's just really cool and really rad to be down here. It's just, I mean, what's, what's cooler than having a shop right next to your house? What's cooler than having a community that accepts you for who you are and rolls her window down to say, hey, or, you know, just waves at you. It's just uncanny the feeling that you get. You know, I foresee doing other cool projects down here. I foresee this thing flourishing and, and for us to be, you know, pioneering on this side of Main Street and possibly expanding the radius of the Arts District is, it's a, it's a responsibility that, like, I don't think we take lightly. It's kind of the Wild West out here, which is so super cool. Um, you know, you got everybody doing their own thing, but at the same time, there's some solidarity in that. I moved back to this area a little over 13 years ago and knew that if I was to ever be able um, to open a restaurant, I would want to be in the Arts District. I don't uh, particularly, uh, I don't live here at this point, uh, but I live at Houndstooth uh, most of the time. And so driving in um, to this neighborhood every day just, just gives me a sense of pride. I think I was mostly surprised at how quickly the, the, the neighborhood um, welcomed us. Every single business down here um, has shown us grace and gratitude and um, I was gonna try not to cry, but um, just so much kindness and support. It's very humbling. I think it's important for uh, the next generation to see that as we come together as a small community that support one another, how much greatness can come from that. We're here literally because this community supported us and I think that it should motivate other people to come here to open businesses, to um, come hang out. I you know, would love nothing more for this to be a, a vibrant city where we are, there's a lot of foot traffic and people stopping from shop to shop and different galleries and um, taking classes and um, eating good food, having good drinks, good beer, um, just really nice place for everyone to um, just be themselves, be accepted. My name's Mary Jo Schnell. I'm the executive director of the Out Center of Southwest Michigan. We serve uh, Berrien, Cass, and Van Buren counties. My brother knew some of the folks who started the organization as a program of the YWCA in 2003. And when they moved over here in 2007, um, they were interested in becoming an independent 501c3 um, charitable organization serving the LGBTQ community in Southwest Michigan. And uh, my brother uh, reached out to me and said, hey, we've got some folks that could really use your help. 
in establishing a nonprofit. So that was 2007, and they relocated here in order to reach a more diverse audience because in St. Joe, um, African American folks were not feeling at all, and still don't uh, to a large degree, feel safe crossing the river uh, into St. Joe. And so the, the intent, of course, was then, if we set up shop here in Benton Harbor, we'll be able to reach a more diverse um, community. Uh, as you know, LGBTQ people are um, everywhere, um, every race, every ethnicity, every religion, every vocation, you name it. So the hardest job I've ever had uh, and the most rewarding job I've ever had. Um, so we're very, very happy to be part of the Arts District, um, very happy to be located in Benton Harbor, uh, but also know that it's a very complicated area. It was complicated to begin with. Um, we've had African American people say to us, we don't feel safe coming into the Out Center because we don't feel like the Arts District is for us. And then also they're afraid of being seen coming into the Out Center. So we've worked really hard trying different, you know, setups and situations and, and uh, have increased the diversity of folks uh, looking for assistance, both from Benton Harbor School, high school, as well as uh, uh, kids and adults and couples. So uh, we're, we're very happy that that effort, um, uh, well, still ongoing, but that that was a successful fulfillment of um, some of what our goals are as an organization. Um, and then things changed. Ella Baker said, until the killing of black men, black mother's sons become as important to the rest of the country as the killing of a white mother's son. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until this happens. She said that in 1964. And we're still echoing those same cries today. It was hard to listen to that interview. Um, it's just so much pain. You get so tired. We, we have black children. I have a 15 year old daughter. I mean, what do I tell her? I'm raising a son. I have no idea what to tell him. It's just, it's hard being black in this country when your life is not valued. When it comes to racism, the framework, like Dr. Lynn Todman over Spectrum Health uh, Lakeland, um, the framework is uh, developed from a sociological perspective, right, as well as human development, you, you name it. And so when you talk about racism and you talk about uh, systemic racism, uh, you have to consider how when a person who is not part of that dominant mainstream privileged class is being made within that oppression. Everything, right? They, they, they are being, they're developing within this system that's beating them up and killing them. And, and so when we talk about context and framework, we, we need to talk about that framework um, and dismantling that framework. And now more than ever, I mean, my hope for the arts district is for it to be such an intentional place for everybody, right? That it's safe, that people walk by each other and white people don't clutch their purse tight, tighter to their body. Um, that we are so knowledgeable of each about each other and trusting of each other that it's safe for the most vulnerable. If we can, as a community, take this charge on, right, um, and really work uh, in, in very kind of strategic, solid steps towards those goals, uh, we can do this. And we can set a precedent for the Tri-County area in terms of diversity, except it's ours to do. This is uh, many conversations with one goal, equity for everybody, no matter who they are. 
no matter how many aspects of their identity are marginalized in our very white dominant community and culture. Thank you.